Hello everyone, welcome. So today we're gonna to do a bit of a retro handheld guide. I'm gonna look at six upcoming devices and if you're looking to get a retro handheld soon, well, this is the video for you. You get to see all of these devices and compare them against one another. Now for some of these devices, I've already done videos on them. So you can go and check my homepage. I'll leave a thumbnail at the start of each segment in this video so you know which thumbnail to look for but I'll also leave links in the description for some of these videos uh, down below. And of course, if there's more information that comes out about these devices, I'll also make new videos on them. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to get those videos. And of course, if you like this video, hit that like button and we have a Discord server as well. So come and join us in the Discord server and I'll leave a link in the description below for that. Okay, so one of the reasons why I'm making this video is because over the past month or so, I myself have been trying to decide which of these upcoming handhelds to get. And I've been going into Discords, talking to people about possible performance and prices and specs. And I think I finally decided on which of these to get. And so originally this was supposed to be a video about one handheld, the one that I was gonna get, but I decided to just make it about all of these handhelds. I think that's gonna help more people out anyway. And so at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about the one that I finally decided to get and why I decided to get that device. Okay, let's start with the Odin handheld. And this is a device that came out about a month ago on Indiegogo and the campaign is still running for another few days, but don't worry, don't get FOMO or anything like that. This will still get a retail release after the campaign finishes. I don't know if it's on their own website or if they're going to sell it on AliExpress, but uh, if you message me on Twitter, I can let you know afterwards anyways. Um, so anyway, I'm not gonna go through all of these specs because I've done that in a video before, but I will just briefly talk about the CPU because I think that's the most important aspect here. Um, so this CPU is a Qualcomm Snapdragon SD845 for the base and pro model and a MediaTek Dimensity D900 for the light model. And both of these will be much stronger than anything else, uh, all of the other devices in this video. So if you're after the most performance handheld, well, the Odin is the one to go for. Um, the Snapdragon SD845 is a little bit old. It's like a two or three year old Snapdragon, but uh, it still plays GameCube games very well. And I think that's the level of performance they were going for. So that's why they decided to go for a little bit older Snapdragon there because it still plays GameCube games. And if they were trying to go and play PS2 games, for example, they would need... Uh, even the very latest Snapdragons, I believe, don't play PS2 very well or don't play the whole library. So there really wasn't any point for them to uh, make this device any more expensive than they had to. I think that's why they just went with a GameCube level of performance. Now, the Lite also plays some GameCube games, but I think between the two, uh, from the information that we have, from all of the videos that we've got out on the internet, from Taki Udon's web, uh, YouTube channel, I believe the base and pro probably do GameCube a little bit better. There is a video there of Super Mario Sunshine uh, on the base and also a Super Mario Sunshine video on the light. The light model didn't handle Super Mario Sunshine as well. So I don't know if that's actually a driver issue or whether uh, there's it's less performance uh, on the light, but uh, it seems like the base and pro is probably a safer bet. And after all, all of these Indiegogo campaigns it's almost as if um, uh, it's a bit of a gamble, right? Like on all of these devices, because um, there's not enough information out there and you're kind of like speculating on the type of performance. Now, just one final thing I wanted to touch on was that the screen is a six inch screen and it's gonna be bigger than all of the other screens uh, for the other devices in this video. So that's something else to keep in mind if you want a bigger screen as well. So this is going to be like a bit of a switch. You can already tell that it's very much like a switch light um, device and form factor. So if you like that sort of thing and uh, the size is about the same same size as like a switch light or it's in between a switch light and a switch. So if you like that sort of thing, well, then the Odin would be a safe bet for you. Okay, so the next device we're gonna talk about is the Retro Pocket 3, and I've already done a video on this on my channel, so go and check that video out. But in that video, we speculated on a lot of things about the Retro Pocket 3, 
There were some early engineering drawings, so we were able to speculate on the possible screen size of this and also the form factor and size of the device. Looked like the screen size was going to be about 5 inches and the device is going to be something like a Switch Lite. Now in terms of the processor, um, we still don't know exactly what the processor is going to be like. Uh, maybe only Taki Udon knows. But uh, going off this message in a Discord from Norbright, he says that it's five times more powerful than the Retro Pocket 2. It's still MediaTek, it's not P-Series, it's not Dimensity Series. All of these point to G70. Now G70 is two Cortex-A75 and six Cortex-A55, which is the same as a uh, Palkitty X18S. So if you want to know how that runs, go and check out some Palkitty X18S videos. But uh, for that device, it looks like it plays some GameCube and it plays PSP and Dreamcast very well. So this device really is um, going to be a step up definitely from the Retro Pocket 2, um, a, a big upgrade from Retro Pocket 2, so that now you can play all of your PSP and Dreamcast games. Now, uh, over the past couple of days, Taki Udon has been testing out the Retro Pocket 3 and he's been posting some videos about the Retro Pocket 3 on his Discord channel. So go and join that Discord if you want um, to see those videos in action. But they are very, very short videos and they're very cropped. So you can't actually see the device. You can only see like part of the screen. Uh, and the videos are very short. They're like eight seconds long. So you, you can't really see that much. But um, he posted videos about Resident Evil 4 and Wind Waker. Uh, those are the two that I recall. Uh, and I guess in terms of the performance is like 1x resolution um, definitely um, or even lower. Uh, he says for some games you have to lower the resolution and then about half of these GameCube games work and half of them run okay but um, performance is, is not really great. Uh, so some of them he says runs and some of them he says runs well. So runs well I'm guessing uh, is fairly playable and then runs means that probably he doesn't play that well uh, and you have to maybe lower the resolution to get it to run uh, but take it that and uh, make it that what you will um, so I guess it's going to be another situation where only about 50% of the games run and I guess they will use that for marketing purposes uh, saying that you can play GameCube games on this but when you actually get the device it might be like well you can't play your favorite game that's kind of how, how I felt about the RG351 uh, with some of those Dreamcast games not running very well. Um, but if you're after a device that actually plays uh, PSP and Dreamcast, I think this is the device for you because um, given everything that we know about the processor, this device probably looks like it's going to be around the $150 mark. Um, some people say it could be even cheaper than that. Um, it could be more expensive. It uses a, a higher spec processor. Uh, it could be like, if it's like a G70, it could be like a PAL X18S, PAL Kitty X18S type of price, or $170. Um, so uh, I'm going to say that it's going to be about $150 now. And so do you really want to jump up, say like $50 or $60 to play GameCube games better on the Odin Lite, or $100 to play them much better on the Odin Base? That's a decision that, decision that you're going to have to decide. Okay, so the next device we're going to talk about is the GPD XP and I didn't do a video on this because there are already videos out about this device. About a month ago now, uh, you can see that Angry Thunder has already done a video on the GPD XP and um, because videos were already out there, there was no need for me to do a video to speculate on anything. So there it is uh, right there. Go and check out his video. He's already had 11,000 views, but um, he only has 400 subscribers. So go and check that video out. Um, but as you can see there, the GPD XP is $250. Now this is a MediaTek Helio G95, and this is going to be stronger than that G70 that we talked about. Um, so this also has 6 gigabytes of LPDDR4X, it has a, a 128 gigabyte storage and the screen size is 6.81 although it's a bit longer so um, I don't think the height is any taller, I think the height is more or less the same as the other ones, it's just a bit longer so that's why it's 6.81 inches uh, and it's also a mobile phone screen so there's a 
pinhole camera there and I wonder if that camera has been disabled uh, or not and whether you can actually use it for game streaming because actually I think the front camera is much more important in all of these devices than a back camera. All of these devices like Nintendo used to have a back camera for their devices and that was kind of wasted as well. I mean I know they used it for like AR and that sort of thing but I think uh, a front camera is really useful. I don't think even the Steam Deck has a front camera, which I think is really missing out because that would be really cool if that had a front camera, if that thing was a six core, 12 thread device, or maybe even eight cores. Um, I, I wish they probably could have gone for something like that and have some very, I get not low quality streaming, but a very basic level of streaming because streaming is a really big thing. And if you can stream while you're playing a game uh, away from your computer, that would be really cool. But back onto the GPT XP, as you can see with this device, um, it's a modular type of device. So you can put a control or different type of control on the right hand side of the device. The left hand side is the same. Uh, so that's not removable at all. But with the device, you can see you have a MOBA controller module, which is basically nothing except a metallic strip, uh, a magnetic metallic strip. Um, that you just put onto the end so you can reach the screen easy. And then you have a first person shooter controller module uh, where you just have a bunch of buttons on the side. And also the last one is just a regular type of device. I think really um, you have those five buttons for that FPS controller module on your um, Xbox controller module anyways. So I, I suppose it is a little bit easier for people to um, touch the screen with that FPS controller module, but I think the Xbox controller module is really like all you need because those face buttons could be those face buttons on that Xbox controller module. Now, obviously with a mod MOBA controller module, you can touch the screen way easier. So maybe people like that sort of thing. I'm not really an Android gamer, so um, I, I don't really play that many mobile games. So for me, um, I think this might have added to the costs a little bit and you can see that it's $250 and I think if they just went with a regular type of device where they didn't have to add all of these extra add-on things, I think it could have been even cheaper. It could have been like $200 for this. Um, but this might interest like Android gamers, I think, um, especially if you play a lot of MOBAs or first-person shooters, well then this device might be for you. And the other thing of course is like, um, with mobile, uh, for like a $200 device, there's no other way you're going to be able to play like Call of Duty or um, PUBG or that type of thing. Um, you're going to need a way more performant device like a Steam Deck uh, to play it portable. So this is a great way to play all of those FPS and MOBA games. Okay, let's talk about the Powerkitty X18S and I'm not going to say too much about this because this device has already been released and people are going to get this very shortly. Some of these devices have already shipped so I think there'll be more information about this in the next couple of weeks and we already know all the specs. It has a T618 eight core CPU. Now this is a Unisoc Tiger T618 and this has two Cortex A76 and six Cortex A55, the same as that G70 that we just talked about. Um, so the Palkitty has already put up many videos on their websites and you can see the performance of this. So it plays PSP games pretty well, um, should play Dreamcast games really well. And I think they put up a Wind Waker as well. Um, and it plays that pretty well. But Wind Waker is not that hard to emulate. So I think Wind Waker is going to be like the go-to one to uh, for many of these devices to show that they can play GameCube games. Uh, but it might not run the whole GameCube library. But uh, I think this is a really cool device. The processor is really good. And I think if you're after like a safe bet for PSP and Dreamcast, uh, this is definitely going to do it. Plus, this is a different form factor as well. I, I like that the Pal Kitty went for something different. Maybe they realized there were a lot of other companies coming in doing the same sort of thing, and Pal Kitty decided, I'm going to do something different. And I like clamshell devices. I, I prefer if they were dual screen, of course, like a 3DS or a 2DS um, or a DS. Uh, but uh, I'm still waiting patiently for one of these companies to do one of those. Uh, but as it stands, yeah, the clamshell there is fine. I wish they did something about the blank space there in the middle of that um, between the controls. But 
yeah, that's just me being picky. Uh, so anyways, uh, this is $170 for now. And there's a possibility. I heard somebody say that it might go up in price. Um, they've sold out all of these units on their uh, official website and also on AliExpress as well. So if you're waiting for one, you'll have to go and press that F5 refresh button um, to see when they're gonna come back in stock. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, initially offered for $170. I think this is reasonably good value. Also, uh, just a handy tip that if you go to the Cow Kitty official website store, um, they give you like a $10 off coupon that you can use to make this like $162 or whatever it is. So um, just keep that in mind if you think about getting this PowerKitty X18S. Okay, so the next device we're gonna talk about is the Ambinic RG552. And I don't have any specs or anything like that on the screen right now because there really aren't any that have been uh, leaked out, I guess, about the device. Um, what we do have is leaked photos of the device. Well, um, the uh, the designer or the creator or the owner of the device, um, he's put out some photos to show us like what the device looks like, at least in its early prototype stage. The white model there you can see is a very early prototype of it. You still see some cables uh, going into the device. Um, so that's obviously not gonna be what it looks like in its final form. Uh, that's just a model that they've made in their office. Uh, but you can see like roughly what the RG552 is gonna look like. And the one on the, the, the black one uh, is probably what it's going to look like in its final stage, um, in its final state. So I think they've gone for basically what the RG351P looks like. And yes, that's a very safe way to go about things, perhaps like a little bit too safe in my opinion, because if you look at Pal Kitty, they went for a clamshell device. Uh, whereas here they've gone for the exact same look as the RG351. But I guess um, if you've had success with your past devices, well, maybe you don't want to upset your audience too much. So you just keep everything similar and you just grow with your audience that way, I guess. Um, but if you liked the previous form factor of the RG351 and you wanted them to keep it, well, uh, this is pretty much going to be it. Now, this thing is going to play uh, PSP games very well and Dreamcast games very well, but uh, probably not too much more than that. It's rumored to have a Rockchip 3399, which is probably a little bit less than that G70 that we've been talking about with, and also the Unisoft T618 in the Plow Kitty X18S. So in terms of performance, if you were actually to like measure the performance, I think the Plow Kitty would probably do a little bit better, but in terms of running most of your PSP and Dreamcast games, this uh, Ambinic RG552 is probably going to do it. So I guess if you absolutely love Ambinic and you want uh, to get all of their devices, well, this is going to play PSP and Dreamcast fine. Uh, if you want to just get a little bit more performance, perhaps go with that Pal Kitty X18S. Okay, so this is the last device. This is the MiU P60, and we're going to keep it short because uh, the information on the screen is about all the information that I have on the MiU P60 and they haven't released too much more in the last month or two. So I'm not really sure what development is like for this handheld at the moment. Uh, this article is from Retro Dodo. It was on September the 3rd. Now, uh, I think the important factors are that this is a MediaTek Helio P60 and this has a four inch IPS touchscreen display. Now the P series of MediaTek models, they're a little bit older. Uh, the G series was actually what came out this year or the year before, I believe, I think it's this year. Um, and so the G series are a little bit more performant and they call it the gaming series. So I guess they probably have better GPUs on the G series of processors. Uh, so this MediaTek Helio P60, um, they're trying to show it as like playing GameCube games and it probably runs Wind Waker uh, reasonably enough. So I was watching one of their leaked videos and it looked like it was doing about 25 to 30 FPS on Wind Waker. Um, it's probably not gonna play your entire GameCube library, um, but it will be fine for like um, PSP and Dreamcast games again. So there are a lot of these devices that are up to this PSP Dreamcast level and that Odin is really the one that goes to GameCube and some of them play GameCube okay as well. Um, 
And so with this Miu P60, I think this is, um, they're going for another type of audience here, which I like because um, this has a four inch screen. And so a lot of the other devices are like five inches or more. So if you want something a little bit more portable and pocketable, well, this is the way to go. This is probably going to be more or less the same size as your RG351. So if you like that type of um, form factor, um, which is about the same size as like my iPhone XR. Uh, so if you like that sort of size, I think uh, this would be the one to go for because if you get something like the Odin, well, you can't really fit that in your pockets. Okay, let's talk about the prices for these retro handhelds. Now, some of these are possible prices and some of these have confirmed prices and everything uh, for the possible prices is set against this Plowkitty X18S which has a confirmed pricing of $170 and it has that Unisoft T61A chip inside. And so uh, I guess uh, all of those other devices uh, will be based off of this Plowkitty X18S. Okay, let's start with the Miu P60. And I think this will probably be the weakest device uh, from the devices here. And this has a Helio P60. So I think this will probably be about $130 to $140. The RG552, well, I think because it's Ambonic, I think uh, maybe people are willing to pay a little bit more for Ambonic because they've been happy with the build quality in the past. Um, it's going off the fact that this has a rock chip 3399. So if the chipset changes, then perhaps uh, the pricing may change here too. But I think they'll probably charge 140 given that they've been charging their premium customers for that RG351M. $140 anyways. So I think it's the RG552 will probably land around there. Now the Retro Pocket 3, um, it really depends what processor is inside, whether it's a P60 or a G70. Um, previously, uh, if it had that G70, I thought it would be the same price as the Powerkitty X18S. Um, so I thought it would be around $170, $180. But I think given the videos that I've seen over the past few days on Taki Udon's Discord channel, I think that um, it's probably not as good as the Powerkitty X18S in terms of the chipset. Chipset, so I think it may be a little bit lower than that um, in terms of pricing. So I put it at around $150 for now. Some people say it might even be cheaper than that. Uh, it might be $120, um, but if it has like a G70, it could even be like $170. So I, I put it at around $150 for now. Now, in terms of the other devices, well, all of these other devices have confirmed pricing. So that Palkitty X18S, $170. The Odin Lite, um, now that's $200, but that's with the included $30 IgG shipping to most countries. I think that's probably going to be the retailers take later on down the line uh, or the resellers. So I think uh, maybe you'll get a little bit of discount from the reseller. Maybe you won't. Um, and then they have to pay for shipping as well. So I think the Odin Lite will probably um, land somewhere around $200 when it finally goes to retail. Same with the Odin Base, uh, it's $240 with the $30 IgG shipping. Uh, and then the Odin Pro is $280 with the IgG shipping as well. And finally, uh, with the GPD XP, with the Helio G95, I think because it has all of those controller modules, it's a little bit more expensive, so it's $250. Okay, finally, let me tell you about the device that I decided to get, and that was the Odin Base. Now, the reason why I got that was because last generation, I got the RG351P, and I was kind of hoping that it would run the PSP and Dreamcast games that I want, and obviously, I knew that it was going to run only 50% of the library, but usually, the games that I wanted to run fell on the side of the 50% that didn't run well. And so, there were games like Colin McRae Rally, PSP, where it was running at 11 FPS and there was basically nothing you could do to get it to run. And so I think, you know, with getting one of these devices, you it kind of like you have your expectations and hopes crushed a little bit when that device doesn't play the games uh, that you want it to play. And also it's going to be a while before I get a new device after that anyway. So I kind of just didn't want to like waste all of that time afterwards, um, going to get a new device to play the games that I want. So I just decided to just do the safe thing, even though it costs a little more and just get the Odin base where it would play most of the GameCube games I wanted to. Now, I think everybody is going to have to decide for themselves whether that 
um, Odin Base and Odin Pro is going to be worth it to play just those GameCube games that they want. And so um, I guess the way you can do it is like just make some assumptions about how many of those GameCube games you want to play because you're not going to be able to play all 600 GameCube games. And so is it going to be like 50 GameCube games or 100 GameCube games? And how many of those are going to work on the Retro Pocket 3 versus how many is going to work on the Odin Base or Odin Pro? And so that way you can go, well, maybe I want uh, I can play 30 of these games. And is that worth like $100 to me to get the Odin Base and Odin Pro? I think people are going to have to decide uh, based on those comparisons now finally uh, why did i go for the odin base well i decided to go for the base over the pro model because i figured i probably wouldn't use that extra four gigabytes of ram uh, if you want to run windows on arm then maybe you want to go for the eight gigabyte model but otherwise uh, four gigabytes is plenty for emulation and i don't really play that many android games anyway so i think four gigabytes is okay and uh, the other thing was the storage. Um, well, I can get storage anytime and the battery, I will just recharge at any time. So I was okay to get the base and save that extra $40 for something else down the line, which uh, we all know there's going to be lots of devices down the line. Uh, and I think that's about it. Uh, and the reason I didn't get the light was uh, because just to be on the safe side, I think the base is probably going to run GameCube games just a little bit better. So that's why I went for the base model. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. I know this video was a bit long, but I didn't want to spend one minute on each device. I want to spend a little bit more time on each one, so that's why it's a little bit longer. But I hope you enjoyed this look at all of these retro handhelds that are coming out uh, pretty shortly. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.